Hello, Michael here with another RenderMan22 tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at a bit of XGen and creating uh, maps to drive the quantity of your primitives and the height and the size. Um, now, if you haven't done the tutorial that I posted previously for XGen Fur, I go a lot over a lot of the basics in that. So I recommend watching that before you go into this one, even if you're not really interested in fur, it's just a good starting point. I explain some of the installation issues or some of the setup that you need to have for your scenes um, to use XGen with RenderMan because it can be a little bit weird if you don't do things in the correct order. Um, so speaking of the correct order, the first thing you want to do is set and save your scene. If you don't do that, XGen will not work. Secondly, make sure there's no spaces in any of your file path. You'll see here that I've got D colon slash XGen test slash XGen test again slash scenes, etc. Uh, no spaces. So this is going to all work just fine. So uh, for this particular tutorial, we're going to be creating a uh, polygon plane like so. We are going to go to the uh, channel box editor and we're just gonna uh, increase the size to 120 it's probably way too big but that'll do for now and uh, then we can just uh, freeze transformations and delete history just so there's nothing weird that happens with XGen because it can be a little bit fickle sometimes um, so we'll head over to our XGen tab and we'll just click the um, that uh, XGen button there and then we'll create a new description and um, you can call it whatever you want I'm just going to call this XGen uh, toot one that's and then this is going to be called XGen spheres one all right um, we're going to be creating a bunch of spheres and we're going to be driving them with a color map and with a um, uh, with a height and size map which we'll see, I'll show you in a second uh, there's a couple of different things that you could use for this you could use custom geometry and archives um, however, I'll go over this at the show you at the end of the tutorial. Um, I've been having a lot of problems with this and I feel like there could be a problem with RenderMan and archives. I'm not sure if that's a, a total fact, don't quote me on that, but I vaguely remember there being something along those lines uh, with um, some of the fluid sims and that sort of thing as well. So we're going to use spheres um, and then we're just going to hit create. So to start with, you'll get a heck of a lot of spheres all over your map, uh, all over your plane, and that's pretty much what you want. So the first thing we want to do is create, uh, we're just going to do a length, width, and depth map. So we'll just click the drop down, click create map, and then we'll decide on our map resolution. Um, I'm going to go with something small to start with, um, and then we'll go up from there if we need to. So I'll click create, and then I'll just repeat the step for the width and the depth. Okay, so with all those maps created, um, what you'll notice is in your Hypershade Editor, which is this button here, you will notice that you will have now three texture files. And if I map those out, you'll see that the first one is the length, and then the second one is the width, and then the third one will be the depth. So sort of pretty straightforward. Uh, but first we're going to uh, write an expression to control the sizes of these. So we'll click the expression icon and we'll just jump down into the second uh, line and we're just going to type in $A equals and this is where we're defining our total size so we can say um, 0 0.5 times $A plus 0.1 and semicolon. So basically what this is going to give us is a maximum size of 0.6 and 0.1 is going to be our minimum size because 0.5 plus 0.1 equals 0.6. Um, so we'll apply that and I might do a little bit something a little bit fancy there at the end as well um, but I'll just get these basics in first. So uh, we'll just copy this line and then we'll go and paste that into the second line of all of those maps that we've created. All right, so now you'll notice that our balls are a little bit smaller. All right, so now these are just gonna render as is. They're just gonna be the, the basically the shape they are on screen, but we can actually use a map to drive the size of them. 
Um, so to do so, what we're going to need to do is jump into Photoshop. Um, and I'll create a new map just to um, show you how to do it. So we're just going to go File New. Um, this is going to be 2K 2048 by 2048. I'm going to use my mask tool. I'm just going to select half of this. I'm going to hit G to fill and fill half of it with black. Uh, I have to deselect that and then we'll use that uh, twirl. All right. So now you can see what I'm getting at here. So you can twirl that up as much as you want. Um, I'm just going to do sort of this sort of shape. This is from New Zealand. So any New Zealanders will be fairly familiar with this shape. It's very similar to a koru. Um, so if you're happy with that, we're going to save that. We're going to make it a targa and we're going to call this height map. I'm going to call it height map three because I've made a couple of other ones as practice. And actually I've just realized I want to do something else. So we're going to go to filter again. We're going to go to blur and we're going to go to Gaussian blur. And we're just going to blur out the edges. So there's a bit more of a fall off between the, um, the sizes of the each um, ball. So the balls that are in the white area, they're going to be, um, have a value of one. Uh, which means they're going to be their maximum height, which in this case is 0.6. And the ones in the black area are going to be their minimum height uh, and size, which is uh, 0.1. So, and then anywhere uh, between that, they'll obviously be somewhere between those two values. So having a little bit of fall off between the edge is a good idea, um, unless you're looking for, you know, a very hard edge um, difference between, you know, the, the, the balls. So we'll hit OK for that, and I'm just going to resave that. I'm using a 32-bit map. Um, just to make sure I retain the correct color depth so it's linear um, and I don't get any weird stuff from going from 8-bit to 32-bit. Um, All right, so we are going to go into the Hypershade Editor now and you'll remember those textures that we looked at before. So we're going to go to the file one, this is our height. We'll open up the texture map that we just created and then we'll do the same for file two and the same for file three. Now, obviously, these don't have to be the same file. If you want the height and the, the width to be different to the um, depth, then you can totally do that. Uh, but for this example, I'm just going to use the same value in each. So the balls are going to be completely spherical rather than, you know, um, squished in one direction. So um, in spite of the fact that we've updated those maps, you'll see the balls are the same size. Uh, that's because we haven't updated it in uh, XGen. So we just need to hit save. And you'll see that the balls are starting to update. You need to do it on all of the maps. And once you've done that, you can see that we've got this nice little fall off here. And I might actually want to increase the maximum size of our ball. So we might make that um, one is our maximum size and say 0.3. And I'm just going to copy that across to all of the other balls, uh, all the other maps. All right, so that's that's sort of what I'm going to go with for now. Um, obviously, the more variation you've got in your height map, the more interesting it can be. I've got obviously a pretty basic shape here, um, but it still will have the correct effect. Now we can render this up uh, by going to Render Man, and we're just going to drop in a dome light, and then we can hit the well, we can just hit this render button, and you'll see it's rendering. Um, currently, it's just rendering the default Lambert, uh, which is obviously not going to be much good for you if you are using RenderMan. So what we want to do is change that to be a RenderMan shader. So we'll stop that IPR. We're going to go to the preview output. We're going to change RenderMan to RenderMan. I probably should have done that before, but that's fine. Then we're going to go to the RenderMan settings and click this drop down, and we're going to create a pixel layer surface, which will now assign itself to this um, the, all the balls, the plane itself has still got the um, the lamb bit applied to it, but um, we can, you can change that later if you want. So now if we just jump into the hyper, well, if we render it, oh, I should be using Pixar layer surface. Um, you want to use a Pixar surface shader and we'll delete our layer surface. All right, so you can change this color to anything you want. We'll make them red and then we'll re-render it and that's all fine and that's pretty straightforward. Um, not very exciting though, what if we want to make it so the uh, colors of the balls are driven by a color map. So say we have a big square like we do 
and we might want to make a color map for this entire square. Um, well, I've already done that, so let's have a look at how to do that. So the first thing we want to do, we're going to create a custom shader parameter in this point. So um, it's very important to get your to name everything correctly and name everything in a unique way and name everything in a way that's easy to reference. So we're going to call this xgen color one in the custom shading parameters, and we're going to make sure it's set to color and not float. And then we'll click the little plus icon, and it's done. So now we're going to go with the drop down. We'll click create map. And we're going to keep that map name the same. You can change the resolution if you find the resolution isn't high enough for what you're working with. Um, 10 will probably be fine for now. It's not. It's 10 um, texels per face. So there, this uh, plane that I'm using is 10 by 10. So that's uh, a thousand square, is it? I don't know off the top of my head. It's the end of the day. Give me a break. <laughs> All right. So we've got that in there now. Um, now, if you want to uh, apply a texture map to that what you need to do is go in your hypershade editor textures file 4 is the new file that we've created so if we run that out um, you'll see it's got our color xgen color now we want to go to the open and we will choose our color map I've already created one um, I probably don't need to show you how to do that that one there bang chuck that in there and if we rendered it now, it would not work. It will still be red, as you can see. Now the reason for that is that we haven't told the shader what color it is. The shader is just looking at the shader color and thinking, okay, you want to be red. So what we want to do is go back to our shader. We can map that out. And then we need to input the color from XGen to the shader. So how do we do that? We do that with a primvar. So we'll type in primvar and we'll get a Pixar primvar primitive variable um, and then we can basically what we're trying to get is xgen color one into this field here because that's what we called our um, shader parameter so xgen color I spelt it in American one and make sure you change the variable type to color um, and don't worry about the default color that's not going to affect you here and then we need to run the result RGB into the diffuse color and now that you'll see here uh, it doesn't look like it's working properly but if you render it it still isn't working properly because you need to click save and there you go you get this beautiful rainbow colored kuru um, now if you want to monitor that color if it makes it easier for you to keep track of what things are doing you can actually change the preview settings um, color so at the moment it's just got this black color you could just go create map create it uh, we're just going to open the same map it's created a new texture file 5 we'll open that bad boy up bang and then if we hit save there you go so that will make it a little bit easier to um, sort of work with it in the uh, in my and the sort of editor there now you could also do density maps, um, I won't really, it's the sa it's exact same as doing your length and width and depth maps. Um, you can make your densities so it's slightly less dense in the area of like the, the white areas or what whatnot. Um, or you can make them a completely different thing. Um, but I'll, you basically know how to do that already with the length and width and depth. So you can play with that exact same scenario, you have to change it inside the Hypershade Editor. Make sure you click the save button to update it. Um, now finally we'll do a little bit of expression work here to make things a bit different so we can change the maximum value to be uh, I'm just going to call it rand uh, rand open bracket and we're going to make it we'll make it big because I don't think these balls are big enough uh, we'll make it 10 and 8 and then the minimum size we'll make rand open bracket and um, we'll call it one and two close bracket and then I'll just copy that across to the others all right starting to look slightly more interesting obviously the density is getting a bit crazy now so yeah cool so now we're getting balls with slightly random shapes and as you can see they're topologically slightly uh, different 
variations in their maximum size. So you can see there's quite a lot of power in using this X-Gen thing, just if you're looking to make something a bit graphic and a bit sort of funky. Um, there's a lot of different ways you can do it. Just make sure your maps are black and white. Um, I've got a couple of different examples on my Instagram at the moment. If you do do this and post to Instagram, make sure you tag me so I can look at them and give them a like. Um, but yeah, if you want to follow me on Instagram, you can see them there. And if you also want to follow me on Facebook, you can do that and you'll see whenever our new tutorials come out. Further to that, you can subscribe here on YouTube and you'll see every new tutorial as it comes out. Usually got one or two a week uh, for all sorts of 3D stuff like Renderman. Um, I might do some stuff in Arnold, and other 3D programs like ZBrush and whatnot. So yeah, if you've liked this tutorial, make sure you click the like button. And um, that is pretty much it for now. So thank you very much for watching. And until next time, happy rendering.